Hey guys, yeah. welcome back. Welcome back to my podcast. I am so thrilled for my next guest, Jackie. Jackie, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I am well. I am well. So Jackie Lynn is a missionary with an amazing organization, Casas por Cristo. So I guess let's just kind of start there. Tell us a little bit about what is Casas por Cristo. Casas por Cristo um, started in 1993 in Juarez, Mexico, um, and they really wanted to bridge the gap and become a tool for past, for local pastors to be able to um, help them reach their community for Christ and, um, and just build up their congregation. So right now we're in five different locations, Juarez, Mexico, Acuna, Mexico, um, the Dominic Republic. Honduras, Nicaragua, and then Guatemala, where I am. And we started here in Guatemala in 2011. Right. So let's let's definitely like dive into that, right? Because I think you you have such a really great backstory, if you will. And so I would just kind of love to have you talk about your your journey, how much you're willing to share in terms of like one, what 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 brought you to Casas por Cristo and how did that journey go for you? Yeah. So um, one of my sons, my middle sons, was 15 years old at the time. Um, I had just left a 22-year um, bad marriage, um, and we were, like, destitute, didn't have any money. But I was taking him to his church group, and he came downstairs one night and told me that they were building a house in Mexico, and he was so excited because he loved to work with his hands. Um, but as soon as he said, got it all out, then he got really sad. And he said, I know we can't do it. We can, I know we don't have any money. And I said, no, no. I said, if God wants you to go on this trip, then it will be fine. He, he will give us the provisions that we need for you to go. I said, you go back and you sign up for that trip. And so he went and signed up for that trip. So then we were doing all the fundraising and stuff for him and all that. And it was coming up on the first meeting for that trip. And all week long, every time that I got in my car, oh, I guess I should back. Oh, I did say they were going to Mexico. Every time that I got in my car, the Lord was saying, don't you want to go to Mexico? And I was like, no, I don't want to go to Mexico. That's crazy. No, no, no. But every time that week, he asked me, he wanted me to go to Mexico. So we went into the, fir into the first meeting. And the first thing that the leader said was, if we don't get more people, um, we're not going to be able to build a house. And I was like, oh. So I knew what that meant, right? I knew that I was supposed to go on this trip. So I asked my son if it was okay if I went to Mexico with him. And he was like so excited. And he said, yes, 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 go. Um, so then I raised my hand and I have a younger son, um, Xavier, that has autism. And at the time, going through the divorce and all those things, like he was stuck to me. He did not want to leave my sight. Um, and so leaving him caused me a lot of anxiety. So I I said, find proper care for my son, Xavier, then I will go on this trip. And of course, a teenager being a teenager in the room full of people, he very loudly was like, oh, mom, I thought if God called you to something that he was going to take care of everything. Um, well, he was right. And he did take care of everything. Before I left the parking lot, my mom was going to drive um, from Nebraska to Texas to keep Xavier. Um, so that was, so we ended up going March of 2020. Um, and actually, we dedicated the first house um, on my 46th birthday. Um, and so that was March 2020, the um, the day that the world ended, right? The, way, the day that COVID shut everything down. <laughs> that was it. Right. Uh, yeah. Before I left um, Mexico, actually, I had the trip leader stop and I bought toilet paper in Mexico before I came home. <laughs> My gosh, and we had some crazy zany adventures with everybody taking toilet paper for a zillion years here in the States. I can't imagine what it must have been like for you trying to find TP down there, right? Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It was so crazy. But um, but so I built that house. Um, it was wonderful. I loved it so very, very much. Um, like I said before, I was going through a hard time. Um, and I thought that I needed a goal. Um, so I had told a friend of mine that I had a goal that in 2021, I would build six houses with Casas Por Cristo. Um, so I said, start praying for that 
with me and she's like, that's a lot of houses. That's a lot of money. Are you crazy? And I said, I just feel like that's what I should do. Right. Um, but little did I know that God was going to do that in 2020. So I started in March, 2020, and I ended up building six houses in 2020 with Casas Por Cristo and my boys, you know, my other son built about four of them and the other boy built two. So we did a lot of house building in 2020. Um, in 2021, God allowed me to build eight more houses with Casas Por Cristo. In 2022, I was all set up, signed up to build six more houses with them. Um, but early in March of 2022, um, God told me that I needed to apply for a job um, as a full-time missionary in Guatemala. I had never been here before. And so I really thought that... <laughs> God had mistaken identity. I thought that I should not be going here. Um, but it took me about a week and a half through a lot of prayers. And I knew that that's what God was calling me to do. So I applied to move to my, my youngest son, who has autism, um, move him to Guatemala and work full time with Casas Por Cristo. So I ended up being hired on in June. And I was supposed to fundraise until um, February of 2023, um, but God sped that process up as well. Um, and I was fundraised to 75% for my bulk of moving expenses um, within 55 days. And so therefore I moved November 4th of 2022 to Guatemala. Wow, that's some pretty fast moving uh money in your direction jackie like that would have been like such an amazing blessing and a confirmation that you're you're walking the path i can imagine right for sure for sure yeah it was amazing so but before guatemala you were building in mexico building i was building in, in cunha and juarez mexico yeah okay and then remind me again where are the locations that casas is currently planted in Acuna, Juarez, Mexico, those two places in Mexico, Hon Marcala, um, Honduras, the Dominican Republic, um, Nicaragua. We still have a pastor committee there, but um, our staff have to build the houses because it's dangerous there right now. And then Guatemala. Okay. And how long does it take for CASAS to expand to another geographic location mm -hmm. it's roughly about how long does that take how much investigation are you in that part of of the of the missionary I'm, arm at all the, what part i'm in is that is that i do the store you know the location store where you buy the costas for cristo swag and i know that all the profits from that store goes to um, fund a new location but i know that for honduras um we were working on it for two and a half years so it takes a lot to get a pastor committee because we always need a pastor committee of at least 10 to 15 solid pastors in the area that we work with because they are the people who choose the people that get a house. And so there it's really important to have a good basis of the pastor committee first. Okay. Now, as far as your family, you're, you got your mom of five, right? I'm a mom of five. Yes. Okay. Yes, a so <laughs> a grandma, a grandma. Yeah. Four, wow. Okay. So when you came to this new journey in your life, like how, how did, how was it with your family? Like, how did they take it? I imagine supportive, but like, how much do you want to like share about that? Yeah, no, that's fine. Well, at first, really, they thought that I was crazy that I kept on going back to Mexico because they knew that like we didn't have a lot of money, um, but the Lord just kept on providing, right? When I was just building houses and that was fine, but it was still kind of like, they're like, what are you doing? You know? And I was like, well, the Lord wants me to go build these houses. I'm going to go do it. Um, and it was kind of a running joke in our family that I was going to be, and with Casas, that I, that I had intended on being the oldest intern when I homeschool my children. I've homeschooled them all along. So when my youngest graduates from high school and he's in eighth grade now, um, I was going to be the oldest intern on, you know, come to Casas, um, but God changed that. So, um, but then when I decided, when I was called to apply here, 
actually my daughter had said, you know, maybe you should go to Guatemala first and see what you think. And I said, you know, I don't believe that God wants me to go there and investigate. I believe that he wants me to be obedient to him, you know? Um, so I came sight unseen. I had never seen Guatemala, had never been here before. So, but wow. so you, you were just like, so you were just like, Lord, here I am, send me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But all my oh. children, know I love the Lord and I would do anything for him. So it was, you know, they kind of knew. Wow. That's so cool, Jackie. So, of course, you and I met through a, a house building adventure yeah. in Guatemala. And mm -hmm. I've come to understand since then that I guess, and I don't know if this is unique to Guatemala, but my understanding is that I guess there's kind of a logistics issue there because the city is a little bit constrained in the sense of like my understanding, in other words, is, for example, you can't Amazon things there as a, for instance, that's been my understanding. So yeah. does that make things extra challenging there with respect to anything you guys need for the builds or anything like that? Um, for the bit, well, for tools and things, yes, because it's expensive then to get them over here. It's always nice when teams are like, Hey, you know, do you, do you, would you like a new saw or do you have something on, you know, that you would like, and then they bring them down one at a, one at a time. That always makes it really nice. Um, but yeah, for sure. Like it's very difficult getting things back and forth. I, um, when I go back to the States to visit my family and most of us are like that, when we go back to the States to visit our family, we take very little with us and then we bring a lot back, you know, on the airplane. So yeah. So it's almost like you need an extra suitcase just to bring stuff back when you come stateside. <laughs> yes, often that's how it is. <laughs> wow, wow. Well, and then when I experienced that build, because that was the first time for me, and it was such a powerful experience, and I only did one of them so far. I, I want more in my life for sure, but like that first one just – really hit me in a lot of ways first of all because the, the the humbling of how amazing our comfort is in the united states in comparison to a, a, a less privileged country like guatemala right there's a lot more constraints we just talked about the amazon thing for example right so and building a house in three days in and of itself was wow that was a huge monumental task but what impressed me the most and what humbled me more so than just understanding the conditions of where we had to build and the general livelihood of the locals, but how blessed the family was from receiving the home. And that was just one for me. So for you, Jackie, like, does it ever get old? Like again and again, yeah. like it's just gotta be, your heart's just gotta be so full. Yeah. I can't even imagine. Um, the week after Christmas, I built my 40th house. I was part of my 40th build. Um, and it never gets old. I, I sprained my ankle on that build and I actually still went out and, um, I had some people helping me, but yeah, no, it never gets old. It's the most beautiful thing. And God orchestrates every group, every family, everything. And it's, I don't know, you, you just see him show up in so many different ways. Yeah. That's beautiful. For sure. It is for sure, for sure. And so the next thing that I wanted to talk about is, you know, with all these bills that you have on your belt, you did your 40th, right? You said 41st? Mm -hmm. Are we on 40 mm -hmm. even or 41? 40th. And next week I'll 40th. do my 40th. Okay. So maybe share with us of those 40, maybe one or two like real standout moments for you. Mm. Oh my goodness, that's so hard. <laughs> um, no, I think that I do know one. I It was in Juarez um, and it was Jose and Josefina and they had four boys and they were homeless. They were living in an abandoned like warehouse. Um, Josefina had a lot of health issues and and honestly, my first reaction to this was what most people would think. So just bear with me. Let me tell you a little bit about them. 
Um, they had four boys and they had adopted all four of those boys and they didn't have a place to live. And my first thought was, why would you adopt four boys and not have a place for them to live? But I soon found out why, because they loved those boys and those boys may not have had a roof over their head, head but they had a family and they had two people that loved them so, so very, very much. It was the most beautiful thing. And so to think of somebody sacrificing um, and not even having a roof over their head, you know, taking in four boys to feed and to take care of um, and knowing that you weren't even able really to take care of yourself, but you knew that those boys needed love. Um, so that was probably one of the most beautiful families um, that I've ever built for. It was just amazing to see them. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And about, since you've been to Guatemala, about how many homes are you kind of knocking it out a year? Um, we are, we normally do 10 to 12 and I did, I led 11 builds last year, but I helped, um, but I helped on three other ones. So, and then I did one in the Dominican Republic with the all staff retreat. So, so okay. I did. Well, and I imagine, I imagine that keeps you pretty busy, obviously with just the, the actual build activity itself, everything, you know, soup to nuts, but what's happening kind of in between those moments? Like what's kind of the day in the life of a missionary in Guatemala when you're in between house builds? For sure. For sure. So there's a lot of things that I do. I am the person that's the head over the store. So I make sure that all the inventory is stocked and the store is looking nice. I've completely changed the way that the store was. I'm the first woman at in this location. So you can imagine what the store looked like before me and after. <laughs> Um, so I've done a lot of changes with that, but I also do a lot of the first look videos. So, you know, when you, when you came, when you signed up to build, you got an email from us and you got a video of your family and you got to see where they were living and you got to um, hear them talk about their family. So I do those videos. We also do follow-up videos. So after your build, after a few months, we go back out and we ask the family how it's impact their lives. Um, you get to see the house after they've been living in it. So that's a really fun part of my job, being able to visit them. Um, but really, it's preparing for the next build, right? Like we have to get all the wood in the warehouse. We get it. We got to get all make sure that we have all the nails and just all those little things all together. Airport runs and things like that. So, yeah, we stay busy. I can imagine. So speaking of the family part, how? How long does it take to kind of qualify? Because I'd imagine with so many people in need, right? That's got to be a tough job in and of itself. So what goes into the, the vetting process for a, a family mm -hmm. candidate? Actually, the only thing that Casas Por Cristo has for their, um, for their requirements is that you own the piece of land. We didn't used to do that. And we came into the issue with landlords um, after you, after you built the house, then the people that the people were the families were buying the house front, the land from, they would kick them off the land, take the house. So now it's that you have to own that piece of land, but really it's our pastor committee. When we know about how many um, teams are going to come down in a quarter, um, we give them, we give our pastors um, applications and they give them to the families. Um, and so then they turn them into us and then we go visit the family and make sure that there's a need. You know, we just, we just pop in and visit and chat with them. Um, there's usually always a need. So yeah, there's a lot of people that need a home, um, but that's up to our pastor committee to decide um, who needs one the most. Well, and that's, so that's just so cool that you guys actually have a committee that is helping to do that as well. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's got to mean a lot because it's having the local pastorship be equally involved and it's not just, you know, Casa's coming in and taking over and doing everything right. So yeah, yeah. We're we're all we're all about building up um the local pastors. Like that's what we really want to do here. Amazing. So okay, so let's talk about the actual fundraising piece. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So first, CASAS keeps costs down. You, When you sign up for a trip, like you are literally paying for the materials for the house, for your, um, for your um, traveler's insurance and for your room and lodge and, and um, your transportation and country. That's literally all you're paying for um, because we as missionaries, we fundraise all of our income. So, um, so that's a huge thing that we have to do. Um, some people don't appreciate doing that. Some people, it, they don't like it. Um, I actually am opposite and I love it because it allows people at home um, to send me. It allows them to be involved in what I'm doing with Casa Sport Cristo, right? It's, you know, God's working through them as much as he's working through me. So I love that. Um, but yeah. Well, and speaking of that, uh, tell us how we can donate to Casas and to any of the missionaries on your team, you you especially. Yep. You can go on to casasportcristo.org. That's our website. And you can look on the tabs. There's a missionary tab. And you just can scroll down and you can find Jackie and Xavier. It will be a picture of me and my son. Um, and at the end of the write-up that talk, that tells a little bit about us, um, it says donate here. And you just click on that and you're able to donate that way. Y'all heard it. Donate to casasportcristo.org. Jackie, thank you so much, my sister, Thanks. for coming on and sharing your story with us. It was such a pleasure having you on. And I pray that you guys just continue to just bless the people in Guatemala, that you guys just continue to have these amazing moments uh, with the house building. And may you continue to just expand to other cities in need. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, gang. That's it for this episode. If you like my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. God bless you guys.